Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rob Has a Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and we are here tonight to talk through the fatal feast on Big Brother Canada 11. And with me tonight to do so is Rob Sesternino himself. How are you doing, Rob? Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I just got off the phone with Jeff Probst. It's really exciting. He just flew, wanted to let me know this was his favorite episode of big brother canada all season that this gave him a lot of ideas oh man i figured the feast part of it would throw him off a little bit but uh but he's they earned it. it they earned it uh, you know they earned the feast so they put together i, guess, I, the I guess the part of it that jeff likes is the fact that there was food on the table that they didn't get to eat mm -hmm. uh so that was and was probably... it real and was it real yeah yeah well, also with us tonight is Jacob Jones. How you doing, Jacob? Mm, I'm doing really good. And I've never sat at this position with you, which I kind of makes Ooh. me feel a little powerful, okay. if I'm being completely honest. And especially I feel like we had a powerful episode. We have a, you, we had a, I feel like we had a great episode. It pissed me off. But it just made me feel even more powerful entering in here and seeing where I am. And so. That is <laughs> odd to see, good. Rob. I know, right? It's like it's art. It's it's odd to see me on top of like me, like Rob under me, like you know. <laughs> I just didn't expect this. You know? Oh look, I, I like that, it. Though. That's fan fiction. Or like Brady <laughs> bunching. We need to like look to the side and like gesture. Yeah. Oh. Well, you heard her. Also with us tonight is Melissa. How you doing, Melissa? Well, that's the wrong way. That way. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, I'm doing well. I, uh, you know, it was a. Uh, I'm. It was a good episode, I guess. Uh, it was interesting to see how everything went down. Like I said on the round table yesterday that I was very interested to see how, uh, you know, everything happened with the like whole locking people out of the room thing and what actually occurred. And if it really was as bad as it sounded, um, spoiler alert, it was pretty bad. Uh, I don't think it made them look all that great for doing that. Um, just like right off the bat, I'll just say that, you know, the fact that they first weren't letting people in, like it was just the three of them in the room. That's fine. Like, you know, it's very quiet. No one knows about it. Trying to keep it sneaky. I get it. Then when, you know, Ty and Santina are trying to get in and you're kind of keeping them out, that's fine because it's just the three of them in the room and everyone else is excluded. But then when it's like, you're like, who's there? Okay, is it just you? Come on in. And everyone's like peeking out the thing. That's not so good. And it was not handled in the right way. And then the excuse for it was like, oh, Daniel was in here at first. It's like, that doesn't mean that you can't let, like, what does that have to do with anything? That's not an excuse. But anyway. It I just had a Wizard off. of Oz memory unlocked. Yes. Like the, isn't that that the thing in Wizard of Oz that you like opens the little door? Mm -hmm. and like, oh, yeah. He <laughs> Who goes in, there? Yeah. I, yeah. I haven't, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I mean, this was shades of Nicole Anthony and Nick Macaroni <laughs> and uh, everybody who remember they wouldn't let her in there. It was undeniable, like all in the room. I have heard people say that. I don't, I don't think it was nearly to that level. Uh, well, I guess because there was three people excluded. Well, no, two, but like, specifically one. because, like, they were in there, like, bullying her and trash talking <laughs> her specifically, like, anti her. And then when she came to the door, I don't they think slammed it's a it in her face it's and yelled fun. about it. <laughs> it's a fun uh, memory. Which is yeah. a, such a fun memory. I'm so glad oh, to get man, to yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> remembering back. Well, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about this because... This was a, a, a very special episode of Big Brother Canada 11. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it actually kind of was in some ways. Uh, no diary rooms in the entire episode. Oh, I oh. didn't. Yeah. Is Damn, that true? You're smart. Not I did a not single realize diary that. room. Did not pick up on that. I wonder yeah. why they did that. It, I, here's the thing. I kind of loved that. Um, which is weird to say because... If you've been watching Big Brother for a long time, uh, you know, back in the day, people loved diary rooms. You know, you'd be watching, you'd be watching the feeds or hanging out online and people would be like, oh, I can't wait for the episode so I can see what they're saying in the diary room. Uh, mm -hmm. And like that sentiment doesn't exist anymore. Uh, now it's like, uh, how few diary rooms can we please get mm -hmm. away with? Because they're so bad and scripted and terrible. So the fact that they were absent was actually a net positive, I think, on the episode. It really just, for me at least, helped ground this segment, especially the first segment, uh, in in the moment, uh, and it, like didn't take me out of it. Like, 
So we were standing there and Hope was blocking the door <laughs> yeah. and we were like, well, what are we going to do? Uh, it was like, mm-hmm. no, no, let's stay in this tense moment where it's like, what is Hope going to do? Is Who is he going to let in next? Uh, I really loved the first 20 minutes of this episode. I thought mm-hmm. it, this was some of the best editing I have seen from Big Brother Canada in a long time. They really tried something new. They really, I think, sold it with the quiet moments in the morning before everything happened. Uh, they gave us the relevant information. Then things popped off out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Books started flying. Uh, people started coming in. Doors started being blocked. No diary room to mess it up. Completely told in chronological order. I thought it was tense. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was really, really good. Um, and it all happened because the house guests misinterpreted what they were supposed to be doing. Because then once they got to what they were supposed to be doing at the Fatal Feast, it got way more boring for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I think all of the, I wasn't looking, because I feel like with diary rooms, I'm typically looking, I wonder what this person says. I wonder what unexpressed emotion they have to express in, you know, just a room with themselves. And I feel like all emotion was expressed. I saw the pissed offness that um, Nene had. I saw Claudia get upset. I saw Hope put his hand, you know, I saw Kuzi. I saw like all of it. So I wasn't asking for more. And it was amazing in that round, but very sad and very annoying and pissed. Piss, it's pissy. It was pissy behavior from majority of the people in that room. And I was not happy. Mm-hmm. I'm pissed. Bad. Who said that? Was it Nene? Renee? Yeah. Oh, I'm not well, talking no, about No, not Nene, because Nene is Shania. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Tomato, Even tomato. though it should be Renee. I yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, well, the one ultimately- thing that was missing for me, though, um, where were all the sponsorships? I mean, uh, how am I supposed to enjoy? <laughs> no uh, these yeah, segments? how are we know, supposed to know what to get? And it wasn't even sponsored by anybody. Like, yeah, they, I'm sorry. They didn't even make any HelloFresh for the feast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that would have been good. Well, I think they had the time. branding of the Fatal Feast, and then I think they probably couldn't get any of the sponsors to <laughs> get on board with that. Like, yeah, uh, hey, hello, death, hey, hello, yeah. Fresh. We got something called the, the Fatal Feast. You want in? <laughs> Yeah. What what construction like, no. company is a sponsor of this show? Is it like Home Depot or something like that? Is there? I feel like I don't they, think it's Home Depot. I don't think so. But is there like a hardware? Are you thinking of the brick? I'm thinking maybe, the, but that's a furniture store. Well, yeah, I think they could have thrown something in with like how durable the door is. Like I feel like mm-hmm. that could have been like an easy slide in for like easy some type of sponsor, Bel Air you know? Direct. Like, is, no. Are you insured against home invasion? <laughs> <laughs> If someone breaks into your home, Literally. Bel Air an Direct earthquake, is there. An earthquake, the book's flying off. Melissa, you probably know more about that than I do. I've never yeah. experienced one, but I feel like mm-hmm. books flying off, lights flickering, like walls Melissa shaking. Melissa has a lot of books. I do. And, oh, you were pummeled. But Have yeah. those books ever flown off the shelves? <laughs> Uh, only when I'm trying to search for random messages and blocking people out of the room. That's the, really the only time. So, so a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, if books started flying off the shelves and there were secret puzzle pieces inside, would you enlist your dogs to block the doors off so Dennis couldn't get in? Uh, yeah. Well, w- one of the dogs, because, you know, like we had to see Not who's both. out there. Yeah. It would just be like very exclusive. Which dog? Very exclusive. <laughs> Riley's a little smarter, so I'll probably take her. <laughs> Whoa. Open the page. Shots fired. <laughs> Someone's going to be barking in retaliation for that one. Yeah, yeah. If you hear a bark, it's because they're pissed. So, can I ask a question about the the books? Because okay, where we see, all right, this uh, the books are flying off the shelves. This is exciting. Um, it was like we're in Harry Potter. There's all st- stuff going on. We're we're ripping pages out of the books. We're putting together a puzzle. Somebody's going to get a secret power. But just to confirm. There was no secret power. No, no secret that power. was the funny part is that they did all of that. And it was supposed to be a house task where they were putting together a puzzle to like for look, fun. Happen. Like it was supposed to be like a fun little mm-hmm. you're invited. Scavenger Everyone, hunt. Oh, guys, look. And instead it was just like, oh, total chaos and just like absolutely and- showing where your allegiance is like. And not even that, like, I mean, they don't have an allegiance to Ty and Santina. And yet they were included in this whole thing. And it's like, once you bring in Ty and Santina, it just doesn't make any sense to not Mm -hmm. bring everybody. Like I understand in the beginning, they're trying to keep it quiet. And maybe if Kuzi had come down, but on her own, they could have just let Kuzi in and then kept everyone else out or at least tried. But it's like, 
once you start letting in external people, just let everybody in at that point, because like they, like even Shania or Claudia or whoever it was brought up the fact that like, okay, so you guys were just going to determine in the end who gets the like, you know, power, but we can't be part of that conversation. Like you think you thought that we wouldn't agree with you guys to give it to Daniel because he found it first, but you thought that uh, Santina and Ty would go for that. Well, like, it just doesn't make any sense. I think that they were pretty sure Ty was going to break the door down. I, I think that they felt like we can't <laughs> keep Ty out. I think that that's what happened with Ty. In, let everyone else in. Like, yeah, Hope should have just removed in. himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like once, okay, at first you can do the little like, oh, it's cutesy, we're blocking the door, we're being secretive, everyone be quiet, shush, shush, shush. But then the second someone else gets in, it's like, all right, okay, come, like, yeah, we're looking for something. You got us. You didn't do it in time. You didn't complete the task early enough before people could get in there, and that's on you. And this is how I know Ty is not really for Claudia out of anything. If I go into a room and I'm before I go into the room, I'm caked up, kissed up, munched up with Claudia. I'm well, to be that, fair, hey, they're broken up now. Well, yes, but well. but I mean, I, hey, I'm proud of you, homegirl. You know, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> I'm still holding the door open for my booski butt to come in and like, hey, bring whoever you want to. And I didn't like that. And secondly, I didn't like the fact that first yeah. Ty went. I heard that Ty like lift up the fireplace and found the clue and then we see and then i see smoke coming out in a very like luxury mysterious type of way that i wanted to see ty lifting the fireplace up i thought that what was going to happen because wasn't that on one of the snippets that someone was retelling the girls when they were crying saying ty came in he lift open the fireplace and then the note came out i was expecting that but i didn't get it and i i thought ty was <laughs> I was I just wanted all of that to come and it did it. And like we know Rob what you said, want, Jacob. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so Rob saying Rob even giving me more ideas saying Ty ripping the door down, like, yes, give me that. <laughs> give me madness. But yeah. That was sad. I, I think I have so this is interesting for me at least, because what we saw in the drop was the girly pops standing outside silently, just like this sucks. Uh, we only saw the aftermath. We never saw inside what was going on. We didn't see any of the like attempts at going in. Um, and then we saw the aftermath of them like arguing with everyone. Like, how dare you guys? That was so wrong of you. Um, and I and I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty. That's pretty much. I mean, like, I I get that they thought it was a power, but like, yeah, I can definitely see why they would be upset about this. Watching the episode, I d I feel like I did get a at least a slightly different perspective on this. And it's certainly possible that this is, this was straight from editing, but like they, they never really asked to come in, you know, like the, they did Hope try and break the, door. the door down. Right. But yeah. like Hope, Hope blocked the, here. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hope blocked the door for both Ty and Santina and Kuzi. He didn't let any of them in until they were like, Hope, please. Why are you doing this? Please let me in. And then he couldn't help himself. And he let them in. All they did was push at the door and Renee once said, come on, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Like, I, yeah. I genuinely think if they had tried to guilt trip Hope from outside the door, they would have let that he would have let them in in the same way that he let uh, Ty and Santina in. I, okay, so I think that they absolutely should have tried harder. Like, there mm -hmm. is no way I would have just stood by and been like, well, I guess that's that for us. I would have been just like doing everything I could to get myself in that room or else I'd just like barricade them in the room and I'd move all the furniture and I'd just make it so they can't come out anymore. <laughs> and I'd just be like, well, you know, two could play at this game or whatever. But, you know, I, I do think that they should have tried harder, but they, they I, they, they tried, they tried to hit the door but down. The, and it's like, I, I'm sorry. I, felt like I saw is, other people go in and then they were like, oh, they're not going to let us in. Well, even and when And they never Koozie, even bothered to talk to them. But also, even at the point where Koozie pokes her head out, though, and is like, oh, no one's out there. At that point, you run at the door and you try and get in. No. Obviously, no one's holding it closed. Look, the point is, is that they should have let them in the room to begin with. Yes, they absolutely should have let them in the room. They should have tried harder. But, like, I think overall, the fault is not because they didn't try hard enough to get in the room. The fault is that they weren't letting them in the room, period. Like, they should I mean, have the, let the, them the in fault, the room. The fault is all around. I'm talking game-wise. Because if there was a power in there and they didn't force their way in, by, they didn't try everything. This is like in a double eviction when you don't go talk to the HOH. Like, you don't go force your way into a, a conversation. It's like, 
don't be polite here. Go and talk to the person. It doesn't matter if you feel like, oh, they're like, they're not, they're not going to let me in that conversation. Like, no, just go and talk to them. Go be like hope. If you have something to say about Jonathan, hey, what, what would Jonathan think about this? Say that outside the door so that hope feels so bad that he goes, oh my God. Uh, and he gets off the door and you, you get in. Yeah, but yeah, they should have done more. Yes, they absolutely should have done more, but they should have let them in. I feel like that's the overarching thing is like this whole thing about not letting them in at that point is just, it's too, it's too much. And, and even at the point where they're like, they get to the point where the, the, they're at the you're invited or whatever, and they're still I'm not like, saying they we're shouldn't, not letting them in. I'm not saying they shouldn't have not, wait, I'm not saying they <laughs> shouldn't have not let them in. What I'm saying is that you're not I already had that perspective from in? the drops. Yeah. I already, I already had the, the triple double negative from the drops. <laughs> what I got from this episode was what were these girls doing as well? Because I, I was like, yeah, they, they kind of got screwed over. But now I'm also, in addition to that, being like, what? Why, why did you guys try harder? Come on. I think it's also handled poorly in terms of strategy. I think that they that there is no like justification at that point, especially at once they realize it's like you're invited or whatever, to not be like, you know, we blew it. Instead, they're like, don't point fingers. Don't, don't, you know, make us feel bad about this. It's like, no, no, no. Like, you guys really did a bad job here. I mean, you've made three enemies in the house. And in even so, you know, only one person gets the power. At that point, they're all like, yeah, we're going to give the power to Daniel. Maybe they let them in the room and they say like, okay, we're all giving the power to Daniel. Or, or even they say at the door, like, if anything comes of this, like, I just feel like the way it was handled was just so poor. It, it just was not done right. That would have pissed me off even more if they yelled out, hey, we already know what we're doing with this. It's no point of coming in. I don't think the girls and y'all saying they could have yelled, they could have, they could have did more. I don't think they could have did anything more because I'm only trying so much. They pushed, nobody let them. They know somebody's at the door. And I, as Taryn was talking, Rob, I saw you nod. I'm like, you agree with him? You agree yeah, talk with this to him? him. Absolutely, exactly. Taryn. As I much did. as you can, I'm only in Taryn, there until this they talk right to here is a conversation. Like this is me talking. That's to not you. a conversation. Yes, it is. You feel I want to get into this room and you're not letting me. I like guess only so much that I'm going to say in the next words, I'm going to call you every other name other than the child yeah, of God. I also do feel so like it's like, 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 let me push you. <laughs> and if that doesn't do anything, do I someone, really think my if voice you, is Jacob, if you anything? walk up to me and shove me out of the way, I'm going to be like, whoa, what's going on? And I'm going to be much more likely to keep standing in your way. If you come up to me and you say, Taryn, please, mm -mm. can you get out of my way? I'm stepping Taryn, out of the way. If you're blocking the door and I come up and shove you, that's warranted. If you are just a bystander and I come up and shove you, that's completely different. <laughs> so we're, it's apples and or was you know it's tomatoes or tomatoes. All I'm saying is those three girls couldn't have done more. They pushed. They all three pushed. Then they sat outside and complained and help hurt them. Like yeah. Like, and I feel like Claudia did say, hey, "Can you hear some? Or is there is anyone in there or some shit like that?" But Taryn, <laughs> these are also girls who I have not seen go up in arms and really like, yo, let me do this. And so I feel as though the little nudge that they gave to the door was enough for that door to be open. Also, like, then, okay, more. Jacob, though, ex explain why Santina's push and Ty's push uh, also didn't Santina's work. Santina's strong. I, 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 but they didn't work. Their Taren, pushes didn't work. Taren, they didn't do anything. Taren. No, uh, no, uh, it didn't work until they started talking. You're probably a better convincer than I am, but I cannot let you win this. <laughs> I'm you're just not winning this one right now because those three girls, I do so you wanted them to do this. Hi, Hope. Can we come in, yeah, please? please? I know please, you feel please, this. That's like yeah. so degrading no. and embarrassing. Ugh. I have to sit there That's what Ty had to do. That's what Santana Ty had to do. Not, Ty did Taren, not beg him. Do you think Ty would Taren, ever you, beg him, please? No. Taryn is insane. Taryn is actually insane. Wow. No, absolutely not. You Santina, know, they didn't I mean, have to beg and Rob's plead. Rob's nodding Just along anything. with both of us, so I don't even know what Rob is well, thinking. Well, yeah, you know, Rob, you know yeah. I feel like that the three of them are in a like pretty bad position in the house. They know they're on the bottom, and I think that they were probably caught a little flat-footed of like, can you believe this? Uh, but I think that also socially, I don't think that they want to go and like – you know, uh, like go off because I think that like when you are at the bottom in the big brother house, it's going to be perceived like, can you believe how crazy they were trying to get into the room? Like, Oh my God. Like, uh, Renee and Claudia and, and Shania, like, uh, they're insane. Like, uh, they lost it to try to get into the room. So I, I don't think it was like, there was nothing in there. They could have, uh, like uh, certainly campaigned a little bit harder, but I don't think, uh, it's the end of the world. And I think that they probably have to like act a little bit differently because they're so ostracized. 
Well, I, I don't think that was necessarily on their minds, though, considering that after after the fact, they were like, we're done with all of you. <laughs> Which yeah, rightfully so, yeah. rightfully so, I would have said the same thing. I thought that Shania did a really good job in that room, like mm -hmm. defending herself and defending the girly pops and basically just saying, like, this is not a good way to play. You think that any of us are pleased with you guys right now? Like, and, yeah. and I, you know, I totally empathized with her and I agreed with what she was saying. It was just the way it was handled was just so poor. And then the fact, I mean, I was just glad that Daniel and Anika were like, finally said, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are justified to feel this way. At first they were like, well, you know, Daniel was in the room first. So it was like only us. Oh, it's like, so yeah, sad. but then it was everyone else too. It wasn't just mm -hmm. only you. Like there was things that happened in between Daniel only being in the room and everyone else being in the room and excluding them. Like there was a lot more involved. So I just felt like the whole thing was, and then when they were trying to turn it on, it was like they flipped it on them to be like, don't guilt trip us. Oh, like, what? <sighs> oh, it made me so mad. Melissa, I, just, I am <laughs> loving this because I need someone to whack Taryn again for me. Yeah. And I no, can, listen, when okay. they would, when, Taryn's like, you know what? He was in the room. So and someone all, in the chat all said, good. Someone in the chat said, listen, okay. Mouth, don't get fed. Open palms don't get fed either. They were pushing like, how, like. I feel like you guys are pushing a narrative on me here. I'm not defending the people <laughs> inside. I'm All saying, I'm saying is listen, that what I'm saying is feels like that they were justified. We, we jump down, room. we jump down players' throats all the time when mm -hmm. they don't fight hard enough to stay off the block, when they don't fight hard enough to stay in the game, when they don't fight hard enough, even even when we know it's inevitable. Why didn't you fight harder, Hope, to stay off the block? Why didn't you fight harder, Koozie, to stay off the block? Because we want to see them actually try and fight. That's all I'm saying is that this I is didn't see the fight there. Fight. In those, this in is those... a physical fight. That, this I'm is saying like, specifically that they should have you... done something other than push if physically. If someone is literally keeping a door closed, keeping you out of a room, it is so like humiliating and degrading to be like, bang, 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 please. You don't have to beg. In. I'm not saying they have to beg. That's literally what you're saying is that if they had just been like, oh. Clock that T. Please, can you let us in? Like, Clock that's so that's sad. Not, I know what I'm saying. Okay, well, you, that's I exactly command you saying. open the door, Hope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is that's, community property. I no, think that's like saying that's like saying that I'm telling people them. to beg when they don't want to go up on the block. And that's but I also degrading. think it was, it was, I also think that it was like if Hope was, or somebody in that room was actually like talking to them through the door, like, oh, I'm not going to let you in. That, that I think is a different situation. If somebody's talking to them, then obviously they should be like, talking back but i mm -hmm. think that talking to a closed slam door is just like the saddest thing i can imagine it's just and i can understand why they wouldn't like they don't even know if they're over near them they don't even know if they're near the door at that point like i just feel like they don't know what the situation is like in there and the idea of them like begging and pleading to a closed door with no response it feels it feels really, really bad. And I can and imagine why they wouldn't want to do it. Absolutely. I completely empathize with that on a personal level. And I feel like that must have really sucked. <laughs> I, I, I completely feel that for them. I'm strictly talking about game. If there was a power in there, I want to see them fight harder to get inside. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, Taryn, who would you rather have in front of the door? Hope or Hodor? <laughs> hope absolutely because hope will hodor. crumble the second you guilt trip him for any amount of time hodor mm -hmm. he's holding that door who let me tell hodor? you part of the name baked who's, in yeah who is hodor it's a long you don't game of thrones yeah oh i don't watch <laughs> <sighs> they had a few fatal feasts on game of thrones quite yeah. a few yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah. Like, i remember i didn't remember the red wedding I don't mm -hmm. know what that was about, but I thought I just... that the the ultimate reveal of like you're invited was like the saddest thing oh, I've ever seen in so my good. life. Can I talk about the puzzle? Like they're like, oh, 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 look at this! I've got this page. I got this page, and then they, they got the whole thing on the table. They find like one like last piece that's like the border, and then yeah. it, not until then that they say, oh. You are invited, yeah. And you could have read that 20 minutes ago. Yeah, you don't need all these border You didn't need pieces. the border to read, you are invited. <laughs> like, it was just like, okay, that's really nothing. And then they just get an invitation and you could tell they were all so like defeated because they did all that just to be like, oh, this is for everyone. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's the most incredible part about it is is that all of this was done for 
no Nothing. reason. Yeah. And right. and that's what makes it perfect, Big Brother, because they clearly didn't intend for any of this to happen. The mm -hmm. fact that it took so long was supposed, and, and they were intentionally putting, like, throwing the books on the floor so that people would know and come in. They didn't, I guarantee you, they did not anticipate that Hope would be blocking that door and turn this into a whole thing uh, because they try to structure out their own little storylines. But mm -hmm. what they got was amazing television because that's how we get amazing television on Big Brother. When the players create situations in the structure of what's set around them, rather than being forced down a particular tube of this is what the producers want to see out of their show. And this was so, so good. Mm hmm. Oh, it was really good. Much better and, television. I mean, imagine if imagine if everyone just like the book fell off and then they were like, guys, guys, <laughs> come here. We have something to do. Something's happening. And then they yeah. all came in and they all got like one border piece and they all put it together. That is like so sad. This is so much better. It's so much more entertaining. And another thing that I liked that I, I out of a petty response when Koozie came out and be like, hey, girls, like y'all can come in now. I love that they were like, I, I don't want to go in there with you, like giving her an attitude. And I really <laughs> love that. Cause I was like, it's like deserved. Like now you want to come out and show us. And I, yeah, I just, I loved how they went into that room. I loved, and I think when they were, when Anika and I forgot who else was mm -hmm. talking, when they were trying to defend it, you know, when you do something that's like shitty and like immediately you're like, wait, I'm not a shitty person. Like, but this is why. And then I feel like they realized it. So I'm just happy that they realized um, the error of their ways. And I also like Shania being like, can we leave now? No, I like, are it. we allowed to leave now? I was <laughs> I like, yes. It. <laughs> it was so good. Give them hell. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so what 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 a series of events um and uh and then we get to the fatal feast itself oh before that though uh i loved anika's like strategy of you know we have to i think it was anika who said it it was either anika or daniel they were like we have to get koozie to pick hope if it's a safety mm -hmm. chain like hope needs to be the first one or else hope is going to save santina i thought it was also interesting how they like confronted hope about like letting Santina in the room and they're like, you shouldn't have done that. But uh, no, I thought no, that it was this like, is wrong though. They should have saved Santina. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I mean, no, but I just liked how they were already gaming it out. Like we know who's yeah. going to pick this. So we got to have like, not that it was correct strategy by any means, but you know, the idea that they wanted that to happen and then to end up having the girly pops have to pick, between each other you know and show where their loyalties lie in that group i i thought it was interesting mm -hmm. yeah well that was i think part of the problem that i had with the the safety chain which was that um we get to the safety chain and they're like no talking from this point forward <clears throat> and i i get why they want to go with no talking because they want the players to make individual choices on the spot, in the moment, with no help from their allies. The problem is, they've seen this before. It just mm -hmm. happened last season. <laughs> they were they prepped for it. You saw them prep for right. it. So there's no benefit to forcing them to not talk, especially when there's no diary rooms. Uh, but like, I just I personally think it would have been so much more interesting if they were allowed to talk. Mm -hmm. And, and, and like to show the dilemma, like hope you are safe. Okay, now what? Hope's like, guys, I really think we should save Santina. Mm -hmm. And they would have been like, hope, <laughs> no, we discussed this. Uh, I guarantee you, it would have been high drama. Hope's decision would have been high drama. Shanae's decision would have been high drama between Renee and Claudia. Who is she choosing to be safe? Who is she choosing mm -hmm. to send to the nomination block? I just feel like. I feel like such a missed opportunity. And what we Didn't saw, they beg I just them felt to be safe. <laughs> that's face to face begging. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah, that's okay. That's, that's okay. That's, that okay. That's, that's okay. That's okay. And if they hadn't said anything, that also that would have been okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. But it this is fine. Yeah. This is the kind of begging I can get behind. <laughs> okay. Good but to know the difference I, between begging. I I'm totally agree, you know. Taryn, though. I think they like I think something should have been done to make it more exciting. I mean, because first of all, because also because they showed us that clip of Anika and Daniel being like, this is how we're going to game it out. And then you'll pick either Claudia or Shanae or whatever. It's like we already knew the first <coughs> like five, four people in the safety chain and what they were going to do. And they like had a minute long pause between each person. So we just sat there while the person was just standing there looking around the table, like waiting for their choice to be said. 
And it was just very dull. It was not exciting at all. I mean, we already were like, okay, go, 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 because we already know it's going to come down to one of the girly pops having to pick one of their own or whatever, and then something else. So we already knew that was coming. Um, so it ended up just be feeling very long and very drawn out for no reason. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I actually really liked it. I like them shutting up and just sitting there with their emotional faces and trying to hyperventilating and trying to decide who to pick, even though they probably already knew and they probably, you know, already planned it out. I think I still got excited. I still got pity, you know, under arms and whatnot. My favorite one was though, was like Daniel. Like, under arms. Yeah. yeah I, I, I got very like, I was like, Ugh. but Daniel like, <laughs> and then picking Shania. And I, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like for one, he felt bad about earlier and then I had to pick her cause she was crying and whatnot. I just, I liked it. I liked the in intensity that they added over. I didn't need them to, I don't think I wanted them to like debate at the table. Like leave that why? for the final two in my mind. You said why? Yeah, because I heard them talk enough um, already in the already in this episode. I was like, I don't, I, I want this decision to be only yours. And I feel like he's like, I don't want to hear them talk. I feel like if people if people try to convince, I feel like, I mean, maybe you know, Santina could have convinced Hope, but I'm still like, I just like to see them making a decision with no one else kind of in their ear, even though it was already talked about and then just them delivering it. I that's think that's, that's kind of my problem. It. I feel like Hope yeah. was more likely to do what he wanted to do if he had been able to talk it out. Um, See, I, I, well, I guess I just didn't want him to choose Santina then. <laughs> I think that's probably, that's probably why I just was happy oh. that. That's probably why I was just happy that it went no combo. I think like, it kind of worked out for me. I think overall, like, I don't mind the idea of them not talking if it comes as a complete surprise to them, this whole safety chain thing. But I think because they knew they were going, like if it was just a random eviction night and all of a sudden it was like, actually guys, we're doing a safety chain now. So here's what's going on. That, you know, is a different situation. But I think like here when they already know they're going to like a fatal feast and someone's not coming back or whatever, like, you know, something's going to happen. And so you want to like game it out beforehand. They already know it's probably going to be something like a safety chain. So they already had time to discuss it beforehand. Then I think like probably the talking at the table um, I mean, maybe it wouldn't have done anything, but at least it's like more interesting than like them just picking in the order we already know they're going to pick in. Um, I don't think they would have changed their minds necessarily. Like, I really feel like they had already discussed it. Hope would probably just go along with the plan. Um, but, you know, you never know. No. Yeah, like I said, I, I think I think the concept, I get why they, they chose it, because I agree. I think that if they don't see this coming, it's interesting to force each person Mm -hmm. to make a call in the moment the problem is they did see it coming and so they were able to plot with their group ahead of time which completely negates the purpose of them not talking during right. uh and and only then made i think for worse television personally uh and so you know i, I think that once you know because you're you watch those feeds you know the producers have the feeds they know that they're prepped for this uh, at that point, is it I possible think... the producers don't have the feeds this season either? I I think they don't. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. That's I why mean, they, they would have the caught sock. the letter. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense that they wouldn't catch the letter. So <laughs> unless they're not, watching. maybe they're just like turning the cameras on when something good is happening to save money. <laughs> yeah, they have their own little feeds. Think about it. I mean, let me tell you, it's hard work to keep track of everything on the feed. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe they're not doing that work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like, let's just film the good stuff this season. Because <laughs> if we don't have live feeds, what do we need to film everything for? Honestly. No, they're like, house um, guests, are you going to do something good right now or not? <laughs> like, is this good? Mm -hmm. Should we get like, this? They're all sleeping. Just turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we then got the the bottom three, Ty, Claudia, and, or sorry, Ty, Renee, and, um, and Santina. And uh, I did like that Shanae was forced to make a decision between... Claudia and, and Renee, but again, I, I just feel like it would have been more dramatic if there was actually like uh, people uh, arguing about it. But uh, but then we get to the competition, and uh, I also like I'm I'm not mad at the competition. I think it was a fairly equal opportunity competition. I mean, I think Ty has an advantage with longer arms uh, and everything, but uh, pretty minor overall, I would say. I thought um, it was so boring this competition. But yes, and TV wise, <laughs> was I? Yeah. that's yeah. 
like uh, I don't know. Like uh, I feel like that it's it's you know like I I come in on you know uh one of these Big Brother recap I'm like wait is that am, am I the drama like uh, <laughs> that I, like this is very boring. No, I don't even understand what was happening. Yeah, it's like spin yeah. a thing on and like and they had to like make drop, the candle stand. Don't drop just... the candles on the carpet. Well, especially because it's timed, and so like we don't really know. Like we're not we don't. We can't follow along. Like if they were doing it next to each other, I feel like it'd be way more interesting. Yeah, because it's like, oh, okay, oh, Ty yeah, like, has, oh, he has more. Ty's only He's one candle stack. away, but he could knock over his whole stack. When they yeah. do these timing ones, it's just like, okay, I don't know who's winning or who's losing, so I totally just check out and I just wait for it to be over, um, and I check Twitter or whatever. And yeah, yeah, not. For I me. mean, I I was talking about this on on my stream. Like, uh, you can really quickly tell like how much I'm enjoying an episode because uh, during the first segment, I was just like watching, and I was mm -hmm. just like you know mm -hmm. just regularly watching. The second the fatal feast came on, I was like, all right. Uh, <laughs> and then the second the veto started, I was like, yeah, yeah. Mm. And <laughs> I don't know about you all, but like Renee did it. And I was like, oh, she got it. Like I, I did like, too. I thought she did too. Like they showed like Renee do it like almost perfect. I'm like, oh, yeah. Renee aced it. Yeah, and like, then everyone Ty. cheers at the end. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you got it. It's like, oh nope, she didn't. Yeah, I was oh, very well. surprised when Ty I was, was the winner. Yeah. I was too. <laughs> I mean, can we also? Will... Oh, go ahead. I just want to mention uh, when I was watching Santina compete, uh, the the candles looked pretty beat up. <laughs> oh, like uh like some of them the flame part of it were like there was like hanging sideways <laughs> instead of straight up and some of them had the bottom like a little crooked uh i assume from them falling over the last two comp uh, last two attempts but See, that's not i, I fair. have to imagine it made it harder it changes the weight i think yeah. they should have done three at the same time mm. so that way everyone is fair and everyone's equal um aside from that though i will say that i did really enjoy the um like production design of the fatal feast i thought that beautiful. it was really cool looking i thought Melissa the clothes the were costumes. all amazing yeah. see yeah. i didn't think the costumes were that good the men's I, costumes oh uh, maybe not the men's but the, the yeah. women's i loved the like all this like mm -hmm. various they gold and black and sparkles it was very mm -hmm. nice everyone looked really great and then like um all the like fake food out on the table i thought like the cakes and stuff it was very like marie antoinette like from the movie um all that stuff it looked so great i did not enjoy the bowl of shrimp cocktail because i just <laughs> kept thinking that is what threw me because i was like okay clearly this is all fake food because otherwise that shrimp would be stanking up the place <laughs> so i knew that wasn't after i saw that, that i was like those cakes are not Dead real giveaway. i've been removed like i'm totally out of it i'm not believing it anymore but it did all look great. So I will give them that. And I know it will probably be like an audio disaster, but I love when people, when I watch people eat and I like hearing drinks clink and I like hearing forks hit the plate and I like hearing people like, oh, I love that. Like my favorite award show is the Golden Globes because they get to eat and like drink while doing it. And I would just have love for them to be able to carve that turkey you know what I mean? Like put it to their mouths and start chomping. I think that would have added a different element to it. Jacob, I have some daily drops for you that you're going to love. Yeah. Send them my way. <laughs> yeah. Are they of you eating or are they of the big brother people? Do you, do you like when they go to Wendy's? Oh. No. To talk about that I don't like that because I don't like Wendy's. Well, send me yours. But no, I don't mm -hmm. like Wendy's, so I don't like when they go to Wendy's. Let's um well let's let's Jacob you said you didn't like the men's outfits. We don't have any winners to talk about. So uh what's what's wrong with the men's outfits in the so Fatal Feast? I just did not so I think Big Brother Canada, I love that they kind of give them fashion to you know to choose from I mostly see that like on finale and I or you know stuff like that. But I do feel like the best outfits that I've ever seen were worn by Ty and Brayden during the final two. Those suits look expensive. They look the texture looked amazing. The quality looks really good. For some reason when I was looking at the suits this time it looked very cheap fabric. And I just was like I can just tell the fabric was cheap. Um and I didn't like that. And that was the only thing that was off-putting to me. And I, and not, no offense if anyone owns an all-white suit, no offense, but I don't like it. I don't like seeing it. I would, I, it really grinds my gears to see an all-white suit. And I just, that, I didn't like it. And I, the suits didn't look good to me, but the women looked amazing. It gave me, you know, what Melissa was saying. And I like the ba-ba-ba-boom to it. 
that is an era, correct? Mm-hmm. Like they were dressed. What are those? What are those parties that people go to with like, do y'all not know what I'm talking Flapper about? Talking about like, yeah, yeah, like 1920s, Great Gatsby. Yeah, yeah, Great Gatsby. Yeah. That it was. It was yeah. like, it gave me Great Gatsby, like, you know. I'm just that, disappointed but, that I have to return my all white suit that I, I know. Oh, no. live show. Oh, no. He was so excited for it. He was chatting about it before the podcast. He was like, I've got this He's like texting suit. Sam. So He's like, for. Sam, return yeah. that suit. I was, Taryn was going to meet me at Winners for a fitting. Yeah. <laughs> also, that would like flush you out, Rob. You would probably need like a. No, uh, no, I got to wear dark colors. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I feel like I always love how Big Brother Canada like gives them clothes, like really like nice clothes to wear for these types of events. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, not like really nice, but you know what I mean? Like they don't just make them wear their own wardrobe and like tell mm-hmm. them dress themselves up. Like they give them like a theme. And, you know, that one that I loved the most was, um, oh gosh, what season was that with uh, Ty and Spicy B and. Oh, when they, was like, that? It was like the. Big Brother I, Canada I, I, nine. Nine. Yes, it and, so and they, the oh, was so the good. fashion was so good at that uh, dinner party or whatever. It was, like, so out there and, like, celestial with, like, the big mm-hmm. crowns and stuff. Oh, that was good. That gave high fashion. That gave, yes, like, that, met, gave high that, fashion. that gave sexy looks. It gave it quality. It was good. And, Rob, someone in the chat said that you should wear a Canadian tuxedo. And, Rob, something just came over me when I read yes, that. Yes, yes. And like, like, I like something came over me when I read that, and I think you would look phenomenal in an all denim look, even if it's you know baby blue or if it's okay. dark denim. I think you would look like stunning in it. By the yeah, way, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm no Jacob Jones. I remember from uh, Sequester talking about uh, uh, did, <laughs> how good you looked in the denim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a, about a couple more a throwback. Is that is this, a throwback. I feel like I feel like this needs to be a thing. I feel like in Toronto, Jacob who is definitely now coming to Toronto, I think we can confirm here, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll show up uh, and we'll, we'll, do a, we'll film a little video of uh, Jacob taking Rob to, uh, to, to, to find some outfits. <laughs> and then we get, and I'll take you to Wendy's. Right? Yeah. Mm. Let's do I this. Like to, yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, good to have that solved. Uh, if you want to be there in Toronto... Uh, Wait, what a segue. Oh, my gosh. Y'all is so insane. (laughs) Head over to robisawebsite.com slash Toronto if you you don't want to miss out on Rob in a denim uh, suit. Yeah. Okay. Well, denim suit is still TBD, uh, but it's a good uh, it's a good thought. Let me look do some research into that. But I potentially can confirm, in a denim suit. Yeah. Uh, so that we uh, had uh, have had a great response so far. Actually, we're going to be there for two nights. Our Wednesday night Survivor show is now sold out, so uh, we don't have any tickets available for Wednesday night. But for Thursday night, we do still have some tickets available for our. Big Brother Canada show, which we expect to be the finale. And now we have uh, about a dozen Big Brother Canada alumni who are scheduled to be with us as well for the live show and after party of uh, Big Brother Canada when we crown a winner. Uh, Will it be from the crown? Maybe. I think it's very likely. Sounds like you better, uh, you know, get, get moving on those tickets because Wednesday's already sold out. Yeah, because so. uh, let me just say for, for here's what's going to happen. If we sell out, okay, that Taryn is going to be blocking the door, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so you can, and I will only let yeah, you in if you, you talk you to me. Make, yeah, yeah, you have to make mm. a, a, a very convincing <laughs> case to get in. That's that. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Ty wins the candle competition, and that means that Renee and Santina are on the block. We're going to see Santina campaign to three different groups, essentially. Uh, You have the girly pops, the shady bunch, and you have Ty left uh, by himself. She goes to Ty first in tears. Ty, will you vote for me? His response? Were you the invisible HOH? No, bad. Ty is such a... (laughs) Oof. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Mm. Uh. That's not great. She goes to the crown. She cries to the crown. Um, and could she she's say she making... was? Was that was the right move to say? Uh, all right, all right. Look, I gotta tell you. 
I think at this point it's a little late <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to deal with the confession. Yeah, deathbed confession. I think she should have confessed a long time ago. I think she should have confessed during the week. Uh, but uh, at this point, with like 30 seconds, I don't think there's a... I think saying yes just deepens his conviction against mm. her. Um, she goes to the crown, and she makes a very compelling case to the crown because it's, I believe, the truth, and I believe what they should have done, which is they should have kept uh, Santina. Now, granted, at this point, they have to get rid of Renee over Santina when it should have been probably Claudia or Shan uh, I'm get, probably getting names mixed up, but uh, Claudia or Shania probably should have been the targets uh, over Renee, considering Renee's performance in pretty much every competition. Uh, but uh, Santina's saying, I'm loyal to you guys. I want to play with you guys. She has basically been playing with them since her Invisible HOH week, where she did a move that benefited them uh, she has worked with them on the Jonathan vote. She has been with them for the entire, you know, last few weeks. At the very least, she has been anti-Tai. But as we saw in the beginning of this episode, Kuzi in particular really does not trust Santina. Um, and they they just aren't hearing it. They just do not believe that she would work against Tai. This is, this is coming from the drops more so than the episodes. But Kuzi really felt like Santina would go back to Ty. Anika clearly felt similarly. Um, and uh, Hope and Daniel were the ones to kind of push back a bit. They say, Hope in particular was like, I think that Santina is with us. She has nobody in this game. Uh, you know, why would she work with Ty? She has not been with Ty for so long. Um, but I think this goes all the way back, all the way back to week one. Um, in week one, Santina was HOH. She promised John Michael safety. She went back on it. And Kuzi talked to John Michael and she said, John Michael, I promise you, I am never forgetting this about Santina. I see who she is. Um, and she not only betrayed, not only went back on her word with John Michael, but also did so in service of Zach and Ty. With Ty still in the game, I think that perception that she created in the first week never, never got off of her. And they just could not trust her, despite the fact that I do believe she is telling the truth here. And it is a misread. I think she would have been loyal to the crown. And I think that they are making a mistake here. But even even if they don't trust her, you know what I mean? Like, even if they, they feel like they can't fully work with her and can't fully trust her, you have Santina who's by herself. And then you have the three girly pops still together in the game who you literally just excluded and got in a fight with. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to take a shot at someone who's absolutely, like a group of people who are absolutely against you versus someone who like, and I don't know if we can trust her, but she's all on her own. It just, it, I think the logic is not there. They absolutely should have taken a shot at one of the girly pops because they had the chance to do so. Um, and it just like, I mean, even if they wanted to guarantee that they would be the ones controlling the vote or whatever, all they could have had to do was just like have, and, and they could have had Daniel pick Renee or pick Santina or whoever, but pick somebody so that way a different girly pop goes home instead of Renee because she's bad at competitions, you know? It just, the whole thing was just not done right. They they have a weird view of like who they're with and who they're against. And I think prior to them locking the girly pops out of the room, maybe it could have been argued that, oh, well, you know, we're all working together as girls or whatever. But now it's like all bets are off. They've shown their true cards. They are not working with the girly pops. Like, now you got to start taking shots because you just show that you're not with them. I kind of feel I, I agree with y'all, but I kind of feel like the competition wins that Santina had probably scared them a little bit more than like the group of three that in their mind probably were very trivial. And like, oh, I don't think they, I think we can beat them in like almost anything. And so I think when I was looking at it, I saw y'all's point, but I also saw Santina wins and how she performs the competitions. And I feel like that would threaten me a lot as well do we think that the bel air direct of it all from last week spooked them a little bit too probably to a degree right i mean the thing about that too is that it came right off of the back of the waffle situation mm -hmm. um and i'm sure from their perspective it was like waffle thing happens and then she wins canada's safety vote mm -hmm. uh like wow she they must really love Santina because we were all pretty negative about her just mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, yeah, it makes it look like, I don't know. Like, I feel like though, 
I don't think that would influence my my decision in like wanting to send her home. And if anything, I feel like I would want to keep her around because maybe it would like benefit me. And then maybe, I, I don't know, like if, if, the, if the viewers are seeing something I'm not seeing, like I, I would take that into account, I would think. Mm. I mean, at least I would hope I would take that into account. I don't know. It's, to a degree, yes. But like, uh, I mean, look at what happened. When Santina gets saved, uh, it, it ends with Jonathan leaving, which was terrible for the crown. So if you know that there's a fan favorite in the game and you know that there's votes that could happen, whether it's safety or maybe a new thing that Santina could win again, um, you know, Santina being in the game is a is kind of a liability at that point. And I was kind of frustrated at Renee because if you know that you're going to be one of the two people that the people have to vote for, why the first clip they I see of you outside of that shot is you walking around aimlessly upstairs. And then the next shot I see of you is you with the three girls. And we have Santina over here bawling her eyes out, campaigning, fighting hard, talking to even Ty. And Renee's like, girls, what are we going to do? And then talks to Daniel. I'm just going to keep it short. I was so turned off by that. I was like, go home, actually. Wait, are you mad that she didn't fight hard enough? Okay, Taryn, you know what? What? I'm what? Gonna, you know, no, you know what? Taryn, want, Taryn, you want this attention from me? You want this little <laughs> 10 cents? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Yes, yes. That, that is what I have a problem with this time. Absolutely. <laughs> I was so irritated. I was like, girl, what? Are, why are you upstairs? Like, you should be down here on the floor. Yeah, it didn't sit right with me. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we saw her talk to Daniel, but uh, at the end of the day, obviously, uh, you know, it's uh, the votes were not there. The votes were not there. Santina evicted unanimously uh from the game and uh she talks to to arissa she says she's most disappointed with hope and she wants koozie to win the game and this was just again for me because i did the exit interview with jonathan and jonathan told me he would have taken koozie to the final two he respects her a lot he he wants koozie to win they evicted jonathan over her hope and now Santina, on her way out the door, is saying, yeah, I want Koozie to win. Now, granted, that doesn't mean she would have taken Koozie to the final two necessarily, but she was implying on the drops to Koozie and other people that she would have wanted to do that. So, uh, eek. Um, but it did, it just was kind of like a final note in this episode that was like, what have they done? Like, it was, I, this doesn't feel like the right move for them. Uh, but what are you going to do? I don't know if anyone's making correct moves this season. I just feel like, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't been totally impressed with any of the strategy, but I also feel like that is a product of us not knowing everything that's going on because a lot of the times, you know, what you see on an episode is, you know, not obviously the full story. So maybe, maybe there's great strategy going on and we're just totally blissfully unaware of it. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, all right. Well, that was the episode. Um, again, it was such a weird one. So weird. No diary rooms yeah. the whole time. Do we know, like, why they did the fatal feast, like, in, in this spot? I feel like that Easter is always, there's always some weirdness around, like, filming um, for the Big Brother. But that was last weekend. Why, why the fatal feast tonight? I mean, uh, maybe, was there any uh, sort of like production reason why it was like a random Tuesday night I mean, eviction? It does seem like this was in the place of a double. Haven't uh, enough people just walked out of the house? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think I think that like instead of scheduling a double, they scheduled this as a replacement for the double, which is similar to what they did last time. They maybe just maybe instead they had of doing a it triple live, planned. It's a maybe. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I think it was mostly just, uh, this is like their version of one of the doubles. Uh, and so they, and, and, you know, I, I think this is pretty good in, in place of a double in general. Um, again, though, I just think, I, mean, I say no, that Mon I think it, it, the thing about the double <laughs> is that you get to see them running around. Like, could you imagine big brother Canada five, Cindy wins HOH in the double, but they're not allowed to talk. Yeah. It's just imagine what we would have missed because that would have been right. a nightmare. That would have been have, terrible. Have we talked enough about how Koozie got screwed out of an HOH also? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even clock that. Well, team. to a degree, yes. Um, but she did end up getting what she wanted because she was able to game 
the the safety chain, mm-hmm. um, which uh, is is kind of similar to how it happened with Moose last season as well. Uh, you know, getting safety from the safety chain, getting to start the safety chain, you can pretty much dictate how it's going to go based on what you do. And in some ways, it could be beneficial because it's a way to keep blood off of your hands. Hey, I'm not nominating Ty or Santina. I don't have to do that. Uh, Kuzi has plausible deniability when it comes to Ty, which she planned on nominating him. But now, you know, look, I chose hope. What are you going to do? Uh, I, I didn't realize it wouldn't go to you, uh, which uh, whether that's believable or not is another story. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't think it's quite as bad as certainly not quite as bad as many other screwed out of an HOHs that we've seen in the past. But I think you could make the argument. They probably slid her some spicy chicken nuggets and caught it a day. <laughs> she Very does have good. quite a lot of Wendy's points. Mm. Yeah. I really thought the Fatal Feast was going to involve Wendy's points. It's like, all right, cash in your Wendy's points. Or they could have just like made Wendy's luxury and like plated it and put it down there with like the gourmet sauce. They could have done so much where they could have eaten while giving the speeches or the names. I think Rob made a good point about Fatal Feast being uh, not mm-hmm. the best branding for it. But they didn't like, have to call it Fatal Feast. Oh, yeah. Fatal Feast. Okay, you're like, right. Uh, <laughs> Wendy's, we already made the sign. It says That's Fatal funny. Feast. Yeah, it That's has to be funny. Fatal. That's funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, uh, I, like uh, Wendy's. Like you, you can call it like uh, Winning Wednesday Feast. Uh, like, <laughs> you can call it, mm-hmm. like best uh-huh. food ever feast yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, feast delicious for the gods. feast. Yeah, mm-hmm. feast for the gods is a mm-hmm. great one. Although it doesn't, in, you know, instill fear in the listeners. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. Wendy's is like, can you call it the safety fast food chain? No, <laughs> it's fatal feast. <laughs> Goodbye. There you That's go. Funny. I like Oliver's suggestion of fatal fresh, never frozen. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. <laughs> fatal fresh, never it's just frozen. so. It's just oh like you, I can imagine them using that. That's the sad thing. Pitching that. Oh god. Oh boy. So All bad. right. Um. Anything else from this episode? I mean, it's it was it was a bit of a wild ride. Yeah, I feel like it went by really quickly. It just mm-hmm. felt like it was like I mean, I feel like it was two scenes basically. It was like you have the part with the the room, and then you have the part with the actual feast. Um, and I'm yeah, I'm lost as to what else there was, but um, yeah, I thought it was um, an interesting episode for sure. Um, you know, I guess. Like, because they kind of gamed it out, we kind of already knew um, how it was kind of going to go down, especially because we knew Koozie was the HOH. It would probably start it off. Um, So there weren't really that many, you know, surprises or anything, but it was interesting to see how it all went down and, uh, you know, crazy to lose Santina in this way. Mm -hmm. I know. I am enjoying these episodes that I, I know that there is a lot, a lot with the daily drops and a lot we're not seeing with the live feeds, but I just feel like that a lot of these people are such cartoon characters and we're really like not getting like the nuance from the live feeds, but oh, just in sure. terms of like watching them, like uh, people, like crazy people living in a house, like uh, I have been very much enjoying these episodes. I think the house guests this season, I mean, are great. And I absolutely would have loved to see them on the feeds um, just so I could get to know them at Mm -hmm. all. Um, And, you know, that's been probably the most disappointing thing is just because I really do like all the house guests and I feel like they're all playing a really fun game and they're all in it to win it. And uh, it's, it's too bad that, you know, like you said, we are kind of getting these like caricatures and it's it makes for you know decent episodes but i do tend to like to get to know them a little more just Mm -hmm. so i can i can feel more connected and i can feel more you know sad or happy you know when they were crying when they were going to go home i was kind of like okay well Mm -hmm. when are you going to go i don't know but you know i wish i felt more yeah well we do have some spoilers from okay. Uh, in fact, quite a lot of spoilers because uh, basically an entire other week has been played out for the most part uh, since the Fatal Feast. So if you want to hear about what has been happening in the Big Brother Canada house, uh, stick around through the spoiler song. 
The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is a spoiler warning. A spoiler warning means that an actual spoiler against this country has been detected and that protective action should be taken. There's a lot of neck movements going on tonight. Yeah. Moving the neck. We're feeling it. Showing yeah. off the, the neck. Showing off the flexibility. neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So since the fatal feast, there has been an HOH competition and hope was proven right to worry about the girls because <laughs> Claudia won the, the HOH and Claudia, having won the HOH, had to nominate two people. Mm -hmm. She nominated Hope. And tie. Mike dropped for all the people that were like, Claudia, stand up. Claudia, dun, 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 dun. Like, a person's only going to take so much. And then when she has enough, she's going to do what she did. And I was, when I saw, when I saw it, Taryn, I was, like, salivating. Because <laughs> it was so many people being like, yo, Claudia's just, like, weak in the knees. And I knew it. And I, because I don't know what Claudia is like Zodiac sign and not even trying to bring in Zodiac because I only know about myself. But if Claudia is a Pisces, it all makes sense. <laughs> but what doesn't make sense is that Ty is a Pisces. That does mm. not make sense. So I don't know about that. But I was very mm. happy to see Claudia win. I was very happy to see Claudia nominate her ex-boyfriend. And it was just beautiful to me. Yes. Well, uh, Stick around until the end of this update, Jacob. Uh, <laughs> so, with Ty and Hope on the block, they competed in a veto competition. <laughs> and in the veto competition, Ty won again, which means okay. that for three eviction cycles in a row, Ty has been immune. Uh, and he is now in the final seven. Uh, with, you know, only a, a few more of these comps to win to get down to the end. With Ty holding the veto, he used it on himself and fulfilling Hope's prophecy, Kuzi was the replacement nominee. Kuzi will be facing Hope in the eviction vote on Thursday night. That is where things currently stand for the nominations. Um, the latest... From the drops is that, uh, as Kuzi described it, Claudia has uh, told Ty, I was never targeting you and is now uh, hanging out on his lap, tickling his beard, says Kuzi. Um, <laughs> so sorry, Jacob. Um, I don't know that that means anything personally, it but, uh, but um, <laughs> Kuzi certainly thinks it does. Um and uh, as of right now, it does appear that Kuzi should be safe and that Hope yeah. is the one that will be evicted from the, the house. Uh, so with Kuzi uh, looking like she will stay, that leads that brings us into the, uh, the final seven where we will see uh, most of the rem remnants of the crown, uh, I guess, which is now just the shady bunch, should <laughs> yeah. theoretically be targeting... The girly pops, the girly pops should be targeting either Ty or uh, or Koozie or, uh, you know, theoretically, Renee. There's a lot more to this. There's a lot of like house structure stuff to get into. But uh, but the basics here are that it's looking like Hope is on his way out the door. Also, I didn't watch the um, drop today. So, no, I did not see Claudia tickling beards and sitting on laps, legs folded. But, you know, sometimes... We 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 have those moments, and I think mm -hmm. she's just having one of those moments. She did what she did, so can we applaud that at least? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's tickling beers. And we don't know what her intentions are. She could just Clock be like doing team. what she has to do to get Clock Ty to vote team, the Rob. way she wants to vote. Yeah, I mean, she took look. She took her shot, and it missed. So yeah. uh, and I feel she's like got to do point, what she's got to do. You have to do cleanup mm -hmm. at that point. Be like, oh yeah, no no no, this was nothing. Yeah. Like, I just had to pretend like we're not together. Like you know, but whatever. I feel like. Um, Ty 
he had to know something was up because if I just read this on Twitter because I just didn't watch it, but I heard that he said something is vibrating under me. I heard that uh, my phone, my phone, my phone. Um, I heard that he said, oh, sorry for like effing up your HOH week, but I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I feel like that like softened that like, like, OK, I can go back and kiss you now. I can like, you know, do whatever I want to now. Um, but she had she I'm, 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 I like to see it. And, you know, Ty worked his way back in easy or hard as it may be. No, Claudia's already stood up, guys. Leave her alone. <laughs> yes. So there is there's a couple of new sort of secret deals, secret alliances happening. Uh, ostensibly, you have the Shady Bunch. Kuzi, Anika, Daniel, you have the girly pops, Claudia, Renee, Shania, and then you have Ty sitting there alone in the middle. But that's not exactly how things actually stand. It certainly is influential, but uh, there are a couple of other side deals happening. One being that there is a new Final Four alliance uh, between Renee, Shania, Daniel, and Anika. So it's basically the girly pops and the shady bunch cutting coming together, cutting out Renee and Koozie. Uh, that is a final four that is working together to some degree. And we've already seen Daniel starting to try to convince Koozie to take out Renee instead of Claudia next week if she wins. Um, then on the other side, there's another final four. And in this one, it's Daniel, Anika again, but this time with Koozie and Ty. So wow. uh, this one, Koozie seems to be uh, 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 true to. Koozie is actually seeming to want to go to the Final Four with Ty, which is one of the reasons why she is going after. Uh, uh, I, I, I might have misspoke. Uh, apparently, <laughs> look, it's the names. The names are getting me this season. Uh, the first alliance was uh, Daniel, Anika, Claudia, Shania. Mm-hmm. Renee is left out. Koozie is left out. Ty is left out. The second one is Daniel, Anika, Koozie, Ty, uh, with all of the girly pops left out. Um, so uh, And Hope left out of both of them. Well, Hope, Hope left out of both Hope of them because Hope, is, Hope yeah. is basically on his way out of the door. Yeah. And yes, Renee uh, left out of both of them as well. Yeesh. Not great. But Not it seems great like them. Daniel and Anika are in a good spot. Quite a good spot. Yes, um, very well entrenched, but they do still kind of have a tricky path to the end, uh, considering that they, uh, along with Renee, uh, are two of the, like Daniel won one competition, Anika has won zero, uh, Renee has won zero. Um, Shania and Renee have both won one now. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, Ty has now won like five, four or five, uh, and, uh, with hope gone, you know, it's, it's really like tie in a big lead. Then, you know, Koozie's won a couple and then a couple people have won one and then Anika and Renee at, at zero so far, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, Paris famously won nothing until she went on a little spree at the end. Uh, so, you know, watch out for somebody like Renee, uh, for that exact reason. But, um, but yes, uh, they do. Uh, did I, I look? Uh, if I mess with their names, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, right. they're all the same. I, all the names are the same. Everyone yes, but the point fine. being, Daniel and Anika are very well positioned, and they need to be because uh, you know it, it, they they're not playing a, a a game that is like we're gonna comp out at the end, mm -hmm. uh, and so they are well positioned to to be able to do that. I like them two together, to be honest. I like their banter, I like their strategy conversations. And honestly, I'm like very happy for Daniel. I think I I could see Daniel winning. I could see it. And I'm very proud and happy for him. Mm. Uh, well, that's basically what we're looking at here. Um, things could still theoretically go wrong for Koozie. She is on the block. The girls have talked about taking her out in the past. Uh, and there's a lot of dirt out there on Koozie mm -hmm. and her game that Hope could expose, that Ty could expose. Luckily, though, uh, with Ty kind of pitching a final two to Koozie, it does seem like she's got Ty on board. With Ty, she should be safe as long as Daniel doesn't flip on her with the girly pops, 
which doesn't seem to be something that is happening at this point. So she should be good, but you can't ever really count on anything in this game, especially with the limited information that we have. DR's not losing Koozie like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> take it to the bank. She's she taking it to the bank. <laughs> well, more of these episodes, DR is not going to be a factor. Mm -hmm. Block that T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel good All about right. Koozie this week. Yes, uh, and that gives them, you know, a big advantage in the next HOH competition, of course, that uh, only Renee and Shanae are competing for the girly pops. Uh, lots of other options. Ty targeting the girls uh, as of right now. Um, I don't know if it's still Claudia in particular that he's targeting or if he would shoot for Renee. I'm sure Daniel would want him to shoot for Renee, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, and is Ty truthful about wanting to go to the final two with uh, Koozie? Of all the people that have said it, I believe him the least. I'll say that. But uh, of all the people in the house, he is the most likely to at this point. Because <laughs> uh, Daniel and Anika certainly aren't. And mm -hmm. I know the girly pops won't. So, you know, you, you got to take what you can get at one uh, at this point, I guess. Mm -hmm. Ty and Koozie final two. I mean, I wouldn't be that opposed to it, to be honest. I think it would be cute. I mean, I think I think Koozie would probably run away with it. Which I mean, is, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. like, as long as that's the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Could you imagine a tie and Koozie final two were tie with? Yeah, I would just I mean, love to hear Ty's, sad... like, final speech and, like, answering the jury questions. That's what, that would be my favorite part. Too, <laughs> I think um, it, it would be, like, uh, uh, what, what, do, what do you mean? Why are you asking that question? <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you do to me to make me react that way? Let's talk about that. I feel like he's yeah, like, Sa that. like Santina would ask a question. You'd be like, yeah, Santina, but who was the invisible HOH? <laughs> I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's about what we have for you then tonight. Uh, an interesting, interesting experience here in, in the land of Big Brother Canada. Uh, definitely felt the Jeff Probst in influence here. <laughs> yeah, it just is, you know, the idea of like, how do we make like, uh, like a crazy episode that we're going to make sure like somebody's going to go home and, and it's going to be something we never did before. Yep. It's, it, I mean, I, I talked about it with Shannon this week uh, on the, the Global Stock Watch mm -hmm. crossover, which everyone should go check out. Uh, three hours of Survivor deep dive analysis. Um, that, uh, yeah, sur a Survivor, like, uh, I likened it to ER before it. Yeah, I, like, I heard that. I heard that. There came a point in the lifespan of the show ER where every episode had to be a very special episode where something dramatic happened. <laughs> uh, and it basically killed the show. Um, and so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Survivor is, is kind of veering into that territory. And certainly, I think that's what they, they were going for here in this episode. Luckily, for Big Brother Canada, at least, uh, you know, this, this wasn't, this isn't what they do every episode. Because I think if it was, then mm -hmm. we'd be in for uh, quite the disaster. But, um, you know, uh, I, I think this mostly worked, mostly because, again, the cast misinterpreted what they were supposed to be doing and made for excellent television. The second the cast was so restricted that they couldn't do anything on their own because they couldn't talk, the episode to me got a lot more boring. Uh, mm -hmm. So it should be a lesson to all reality TV producers. Let your cast create your content. They will, uh, as long as you cast them well, they will not disappoint you. And uh, this is a well cast cast. So uh, let them let them cook. Except for Anika, because her waffles <laughs> are tasteless. Yeah. <laughs> but like, imagine what the episode would have been if it was just like they find the books and everyone's like, guys, let's see what this is. And they put yeah. together that very yeah. simple puzzle. And then they're like, ooh, a feast. Family project. Let's get dressed. And then they just like go to the feast. Like, I just feel like that's what they is. thought this episode was going to be. Yeah. That's what they planned. Like, I mean, we're, oh. they would have just showed Whoa. way more of the um, competition. And just like we wish we would watch the candles going around the thing. <laughs> yeah. oh, boy. Mm -hmm. At least put a timer on the comp. If it's yeah. going to be timed, put a timer on there. Right. So, that so we, we have can see. Any idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, All right. what are we looking at? <laughs> oh, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, which is that uh, during the safety chain, when it comes down to Shania choosing between Claudia or, uh, or Renee, um, and it's this big dramatic moment. Who's she going to choose between the two of her friends? Um, and she goes, 
I choose Claudia. <laughs> it's like, you didn't need to add the I choose. You didn't need to make this uh, the, the rose ceremony where you're like, I choose Claudia, my friend Claudia, over my friend Renee. Yeah. Like, you could have just said, uh, uh, Claudia. Yeah, yeah. Like, sorry, Renee. Yeah. Very dramatic. It's, it was yeah. It was really just like forecasting uh, what would happen in the like. Uh, all right, who are you bringing to the final two, Shanae? I know. I choose. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we have for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. You can of course uh, check out the drop update tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if Kuzi is still on board to stay and if everything's looking the same. Uh, we'll of course have an episode tomorrow night as well, which we'll be uh, on. After the know-it-alls ends, to recap, uh, speaking of which, check out the know-it-alls tomorrow night after the Survivor episode. Uh, you, you can Darren. find me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Darren Armstrong, watching these episodes live uh, with all of you, including tomorrow night's Survivor episode. Uh, and uh, again, uh, robswebsite.com slash Toronto uh, if you want to get those tickets before they sell out. Uh, Rob, what else have you got going on? Oh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, of course, all of my Survivor coverage had a fun uh, feedback show with Frail Mary last night. Check uh, that one out. But right after this episode, if you're watching us live, that we are going to uh, do something that we don't uh, always do. I'm going to stream a podcast that I recorded earlier this afternoon. Sasha Joseph and I have been podcasting this season of below deck colon sailing yacht on a little thing we're calling big deck energy and so we're going to be <laughs> recapping uh, having a recap come up of episode number two you can listen to our below deck uh, recaps in our uh, newly minted bravo recaps podcast feed where you can also hear jacob and maggie's coverage of real housewives of salt lake city so all of our bravo stuff is gonna be in one place a new Bravo podcast feed at Rob's website.com slash Bravo feed. Jacob, if you heard someone had big deck energy, uh, what would you think? Uh, you know exactly what I would think. <laughs> <laughs> they love would, below deck Colin sailing in... yacht. Right. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. Love yeah. That. What have you got going on, Jacob? I'm just here chilling, guys. Um, I, everyone can find me anywhere and everywhere at Jacob J underscore Jones. And uh, yeah, I am really wanting to put it on myself to, and this is not really, this is an introspective thought about my life, but I'm really wanting to really connect with social media more because I really just don't do it as much as like I would like. So, you know. I feel like that's the opposite of what people normally say. I know. People say, <laughs> let me get away, but I really don't tweet. I just retweet and I, I don't really post. You know, I'm just like, I just want to do more. Because when I'm watching TV shows, I have thoughts, but I just keep them inside. But this is goes on more of a rant. But quickly, I was watching like a couple episodes ago, Secession, and I was like eating Oreos with peanut butter. And I was like recording myself talking about it. So maybe I'll release those clips someday. I didn't know you were a Succession guy. Oh, yeah, I'm a big secession guy. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Big, yeah. big, big. Yes. Okay. <laughs> We'd love to hear your thoughts sometime. <laughs> Especially while eating uh, peanut buttered Oreos. Yes, well, you get a spoon, plop the peanut butter on there, make sure it's crunchy, and then plop it in your mouth. That's delicious. I'm really oh, hungry. I'm about to eat some tonight. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, you can, it. of course, find Melissa at It's Melissa oh, with three A's. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.